Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel, hi I'm Mathematics. Today we have very interesting and in the same way this is very tricky algebra question. We have a to the fourth equal to a minus one raised to the fourth power and we need to find our a. If you have your solution, your approach, you can also write your solution in the comments below and then we will check our answers. So right now let's start. A lot of students might be thinking, okay, let's just cancel this four power from both sides, but that's not how it works. Right now I'm going to show you how can we solve this question correctly, step by step. First of all, let's write this expression from right side to left side, so with the negative sign. As a result, what do we have? We have a to the fourth power, so we have a to the fourth minus this one from the right side, so we have minus a minus one to the fourth power and equal to equal to zero. So this is our first step. Second step, instead of this a to the fourth power, we can easily write a square raised to the to the second power. So I hope you understand it. According to a basic power rule, we can easily multiply it. So we will have the same a to the fourth power. Okay, so this is our first step. And according to the same property, we can easily write this one as a minus one, a minus one right here, raised to the second power. And of course, all of this, I'm going to write these type of brackets, we can erase to the second power equal to zero. So according to this property, I split it like uh, second power to the second power and second power to the second power. But right now, if you look closely, we can either easily consider it as a difference of two squares and everyone should know this school formula. I'm going to write it in terms of x and y. So when we have x square minus y square, we can write it as x plus y. So we have x plus y and times x minus y. This is our basic school identity and right now let's apply this identity uh, to our question. So we can easily consider it, we can easily consider this one as x and this one, this is our y. So we can consider it as difference of two squares. So addition and so right here subtraction. So let's do this, let's split it. Okay, as a result, what do we have? We have in the first parenthesis, we have a square plus y, so plus a minus one to the second power. So we have a square minus and right here we have a minus one to the to the second power. We can easily write minus, then plus, doesn't matter. And the second parenthesis, we write it as a square plus a minus one, a minus one to the to the second power and equal to equal to zero. Right now we can easily simplify this a little bit. First of all, we can easily raise this a minus one to the second power in both parentheses. So let's do this right now. As a result, what do we have? We have a square minus, and right now let's raise this. So a minus one to the second power, according to a school identity, this is equal to a square minus two a and, and plus one, plus one. These are our first parentheses. And in the second parentheses, we have a square plus the same thing, a square minus two a and plus one. So a square minus two a and plus one. 1 equal to equal to 0. Right now let's simplify this a little bit. We have two parentheses, so let's let's open our parentheses on our left side. As a result, what do we have? We have a square, a square minus a square. We need to change all this sign in parentheses. So minus a square plus 2a and minus minus 1. This is our first parentheses. And the same thing in the second one, but we need to like get rid of our parentheses because we have addition, so we don't need to change all the signs. So we have a square plus a square minus 2a and plus 1 equal to equal to 0. So we have a product of two parentheses, but we can easily simplify this real quick because we can easily cancel this a square. We can easily add this a square and a square. We have two a square and as a result, what do we get from here? We're going to get two parentheses. The first one, 2a minus 1, 2a minus 1 because we cancel our a square. And the second parentheses, we will have 2a square minus 2a plus 1. So we have 2a square minus 2a and plus and plus 1 equal to equal to zero. And right now, really basic thing, because we have a product of two parentheses. So a product of two parentheses equal to zero, when first parentheses equal to zero, or the second one equal to zero. So let's start with the first one. So we have 2a, 2a minus one is equal to is equal to zero. From here we have 2a equal to one, and from here we have that our a is equal to one, is a is equal to one half. Okay, this is our first first root a first. We're going to check it a little bit later, but right now let's find, let's solve our uh, second parentheses. So we have 2a square minus 2a 
and plus one equal to zero. First of all, we can find our discriminant real quick. Uh, of course, with the method of coefficients, we have a equal to a equal to two, b equal to minus two, and c equal to equal to one. Right now, we can easily find our discriminant real quick. So we have d equal to b square minus four ac. All known formula. From here, we have b square minus two square minus four times a times two and times c times times one. And from here, our discriminant is equal to, so we have minus two square equal to uh, equal to four. Yeah, we have right here four. And we have right here minus, minus four times two, we have eight. So our discriminant is equal to minus four. Our discriminant is negative, so it means that in this parentheses we're gonna get uh, two complex roots. So let's find it real quick. So our a second and a third, so a second and third, equal to, we have minus b plus minus square root of d and all over to a all known formula. And right now let's plug in all the things. So we have, first of all, we have minus b. So we have minus minus two plus minus square root of discriminant, square root of minus four and all over two times a, two times, two times two. Let's simplify this real quick. So first of all, minus minus is plus. So we have two plus minus square root of minus four. We can easily split it like square root of minus one times four. Okay, we can easily write it as a product. Okay, all over two times two equal to equal to four. Okay, right now in terms of uh, our um, square, root, uh, square root property, we can easily split it. We can write it as two plus minus. This one can be easily written as square root of minus one and times square root of square root of four. And we divide it by 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 four. But this square root of minus one, these are a complex unit. This is our i. So as a result, we can write it as two plus minus uh, square root of four equal to two. So we have two i and all over, all over, all over four. And the final tricky move, we're gonna divide both parts. So we can easily, uh, like, mm, we can easily split it by real part and imaginary part. We can write it as two over four plus minus 2i over over 4. We can easily write it like that. As a result, what do we get from here? We have 2 over 4 equal to 1 half, 1 half, plus minus. We have i over over 2 because we're going to cancel these 2 and 4. So we have i over 2. This is the first interpretation. A lot of students uh, don't like this one. Of course, you can easily write it with, with a common denominator. You can write it as 2. And in our numerator, you're going to get a 1 plus minus plus minus i. Something like that. So two interpretation, this one or this one. Or maybe I think this one is much easier for us, more understandable for us, because right here we have... Mm, look like a great expression. We don't have a fraction. We have only one fraction with the plus, with the plus minus. So basically, we can write our final answer with a second equal to uh, one plus i over two. Let's write it like that: one plus i over two and a third equal to one minus i over, over two. So these are our two, uh, two complex, uh, two complex roots. And few thoughts about this, about this question, because a lot of students, as I said before, as I said in the beginning, uh, a lot of students might be thinking, I'm gonna rewrite my question real quick. So right here, I'm gonna do it. So a to the fourth equal to a minus one, a minus one to the fourth, to the fourth power. And a lot of students, this might like hence this my notes to this question. And a lot of students might be thinking. Okay, let's just cancel this fourth power right here and right here. As a result, what do we get? A equal to A minus 1. And then a lot of students are confused because right here we can easily cancel this A and we have 0 equal to minus 1. And they're confused because they think, what, what just happened? How can we can't, how can we find uh, one real number root? And they're confused about this, about this solution. And a few thoughts about this, about this approach because a lot of students may be thinking, of course, we can cancel this fourth power. We raise this on both sides. We can cancel it. Of course, this is a correct way, but a lot of students forget about the thing which is called absolute value. Of course, you have a to the fourth equal to a minus 1 to the fourth power. And when you cancel an even power like force on both sides, you need to put absolute value because this a can be positive, can be negative. So we need to put absolute value a on the left side. And of course, you need to put absolute value on the right side. And in this way, you can easily find uh, if you solve this absolute value question. Of course, there are a lot of ways. How can we do this? The first way is uh, like a combination method. You can easily uh, write uh, four, four equations with the first case plus this plus this minus this plus this plus this negative. And of course, the last one, both uh, both uh, negative. And I think in this case, when this is positive, this is negative, you can find 
that our a is equal to one half. In this part, you can easily find that a equal to one half. So you can easily solve this question like that. You can easily cancel forced power, but don't forget about absolute value. And with absolute value, of course, you can easily find a equal to one half. But few things about this approach. This is not a full, a full solution because according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, whenever you have expression with the force power, it means that you you're gonna have like four roots in total. You don't know how we don't know how many real number roots, how many complex roots, but we have four roots in total. And in this case, with the canceling force power, you avoid a lot of complex roots. In our case, you avoid this this part with with complex root which is extremely important because you forget about uh, another part another part of solution this is extremely important thing in terms of math so you, you can easily uh, solve this question if you for example if you don't have a uh, time on your exam you can easily cancel it you can easily find one real number root and everything is great but if you want to solve this question completely and step by step it's a great to factor it it's a great to simplify this a little bit and as a result you can easily say okay i solve this question completely i have a first equal to one half a second equal to and a third equal to. So right now let's write our final answer and in the end we're gonna check our a equal to one half. So our final answer to this question, our final answer to this question, so a first equal to one half, a second, this is our, mm, let's, uh, let's start with this one, one plus i over two, and right here we have a third, a third equal to one minus i, one minus i over two. These roots are complex root, complex roots this one is real number uh, real number real number root. so this is our full solution and in the end let's check it real quick a first equal to one half so let's do this and i don't want to rewrite this expression one more let's plug in real quick right here so we can easily see this uh, equation from the beginning so let's split it real quick and let's check it okay let's check our a equal to one half let's do this so we have one half raised to the fourth power equal to one half minus one and to the fourth power and the right here we're gonna have like one fourth uh, one second to the fourth power this is equal to one over uh, 16 one over 16 right here because we have one over two to the power four equal to right here we're gonna have minus one half in parentheses but according to uh, even power we can write it with the, with the positive sign because we can cancel it we can write it like that we can write it minus one half uh, to the fourth power which is equal to this one we can easily cancel because we can write it if you want a, a full full solution full proof we can write it as minus one times one half and according to this property we can raise four to the minus one to the power four which is equal to one with the, with the so we can easily get rid of this uh, negative sign and we have one four one second one half to the to the fourth power which is absolutely the same thing that we have um, on the left side so our our root is is great so this is my solution to the question i really enjoyed this question because of, you know a lot of students mm, getting confused when they, they see this question when they try to solve it they cancel this fourth power they solve this question quickly but as you can see without an easy manipulation to be honest because we factor it with the basic school identity we raise this with the basic school identity we simplify this with the basic school knowledge and we have a product of two parentheses so it's not that hard but you know maybe a lot of students um, in this video they find out how can we solve this question correctly so i really enjoy and i really appreciate if you if you understand it if you still have any question write a question down into the comment section it will be really interesting to discuss a little bit and thank you everyone for your time thank you everyone for your support thank you everyone for your likes for your dislikes for your comments for your for your response i really appreciate it and see you in the next videos have a great day and take care of yourself